the German invasion of the Soviet Union, codename Barbarossa, on June 22, 1941, was an important turning point in modern European history. It would introduce a new level of horror to the concept of war and to the people of both countries. The German Wehrmacht and Waffen-SS saw this conflict as a modern-day crusade against the invading Bolshevik hordes, a fight for the very survival of Western civilization. There was no denying that the four long years of intense fighting on the Eastern Front would generate its own unique breed of soldiers, many of whom served on both sides. Michael Whitman a young assault gun commander of the 1st SS Panzer Division, Leib Standarda, was one of these. The invasion was organized into three German army groups. The 1st Army Group North spearheaded the offensive towards Leningrad. The 2nd Army Group Center was tasked with capturing Moscow. The 3rd, which included the Leib Standarda, belonged to Army Group South and had the critical mission of securing the oil fields in the Caucasus region. Following their campaign in Greece, the Leib Standarda had been strengthened to divisional size. However, they weren't fully prepared to participate in the initial invasion. As German forces began their advance into enemy territory at the end of June and the start of July 1941, Wit Mann and his fellow soldiers were not far behind, soon to be fully engaged in the unfolding conflict. Before diving into this, I want to thank World of Warships for sponsoring this video. If you didn't already know, this is a free-to-play game available for PC, with insane graphics, more than 40 different 12v12 arenas, and more than 500 ships across 5 different classes. The game has new content releases every month, whether it be new ships, nations, cosmetics, or even new ship classes. Expect something new and exciting every time you dive into the game, with a selection of over 40 unique maps featuring dynamic weather, new water effects, and textures, the game's oceans closely resemble real-life settings. You've got multiple ship classes to choose from, including big powerful battleships, agile and devastating destroyers, do-it-all cruisers, massive aircraft carriers and my personal favorite, submarines. This game revolves around strategy and knowledge. The ever-changing weather conditions and objectives can significantly influence your gameplay. The game is also available on consoles, completely free. So download World of Warships right now using the first link in the description. Be sure to use the promo code BRAVO during registration to receive a huge starter pack, including 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and a free ship. There's a lot of stuff here, so you definitely want to go check that out. While it became evident that Hitler and the German Army High Command had underestimated the Soviet Red Army's strength and organization. The initial victories provided ample encouragement to the invading forces. By the start of July, German divisions were swiftly advancing through the Ukrainian steppes, seemingly conquering all obstacles in their path. Michael Whitman's Stug III assault gun also played part in contributing to this success. On the 12th of July, Whitman's Stug 3 received orders to relocate to a strategic hill known as Point 65.5. Upon reaching their destination and narrowly avoiding a ditch, SS Sturmmann Bruggenkamp, Whitman's gunner, noticed a group of enemy vehicles rapidly approaching. Whitman peered ahead through the binocular telescope, observing the activities unfolding at the western edge of the hill. Having repositioned their vehicle to gain a more advantageous viewpoint, Whitman and his crew spotted a total of 18 T-34-76 tanks, divided into two groups, with 12 in one and 6 in the other. Whitman then instructed his driver 
SS Unterscharfer Fritz, to move the vehicle to the left side of the hill. Whitman and his crew braced themselves for the impending clash, aligning their assault gun to confront the advancing Russian armor head-on. Following another repositioning to secure a commanding view over the hill, Whitman took charge and issued orders. T-34 ahead of us, load armor piercing, enemy tanks to the right, open fire. A shot resounded through the air. With his forehead pressed against the periscope, Whitman kept his gaze fixed on the T-34. He witnessed an armor-piercing shell hitting the turret, causing it to ricochet high into the air. The second shot yielded the same outcome. At that moment, the first enemy shot sailed over the assault gun, missing its mark. The first T-34 in their sights was then struck twice more. Cursing the inefficiency of the short-barreled 75mm gun against enemy armor, the gunner exclaimed, Damn it, we can't penetrate their armor. What a useless gun we have. When two more T-34s emerged, the commander issued an order, aim at the tracks and other weak spots. The first shot successfully damaged the track of the leading tank. Due to the Stug's lack of a rotating turret, the entire responsibility fell on the shoulders of the driver, Fritz. With exceptional skill, he adeptly maneuvered the vehicle into an optimal position, enabling Bruggenkamp to precisely target a second T-34, which quickly became engulfed in flames. In a matter of seconds the loader swiftly inserted the next round into the hot and oily breach. Looking through the scissors, Whitman spotted one of the enemy tank turret aimed in their direction, ready to fire at any moment. Then he ordered to turn right and accelerate at full power. The assault gun surged forward, and at that precise moment, the enemy opened fire. The shell narrowly missed, passing just two meters behind the assault gun. Thanks to its low silhouette, the Stu presented a small target for the enemy tank guns. Following a narrow escape from another T-34, and with a Russian gunner who had rather poor aim, Whitman managed to reach the edge of a small forest, where he could strategize his next course of action. While conducting a quick reconnaissance on foot, Whitman noticed a third enemy vehicle. Believing he had remained unnoticed, Whitman was taken by surprise when a deafening crash resonated in his vicinity. After dusting himself off he discovered a demolished T-34, its turret blown off and now protruding from the ground like a flagpole. The crucial factor in this situation was clearly Bruggenkamp's remarkable powers of observation, quick thinking, and exceptional gunnery skills. Although both vehicles had fired simultaneously, Whitman's gunner had demonstrated the presence of mind to locate, aim, and strike the target. Upon returning to his cupola, Whitman was the first to commend his skilled gunner. In the aftermath of yet another close encounter, with two wayward shots from a passing T-34, Whitman promptly identified another Soviet vehicle. Kicking the Maybach engine, Fritz expertly guided the Stug 3 to position to allow Bruggenkamp for a clear shot at the enemy tank. In an instant, the fourth Russian tank was obliterated. Following another tense encounter, skillfully navigated by Fritz through a deceptive water crossing, Whitman embarked on a mission to find the three Russian vehicles he had observed earlier. Upon scanning the surroundings, he spotted the trio of T-34s positioned on top of a hill, with their engines humming. With a rapid maneuver by Fritz, the Stug 3 closed the gap to within 500 meters of the remaining Soviet tank. In quick response to Whitman's command, Bruggenkamp fired a 75mm armor-piercing round, which struck the Russian vehicle with a resounding crack. 
the remaining T-34s swiftly shifted their aim toward Whitman's vehicle, prompting Fritz to urgently reposition the Stud free. Bruggenkamp fired another round, but this one ricocheted off the enemy tank. Loader Newston worked diligently, and eventually, Bruggenkamp landed a shot that appeared to disable the turret of the enemy tank. Meanwhile, the third T-34 had opted for a hasty retreat to safety. As Whitman and his crew began to disengage, they were taken by surprise when the turret of the second T-34 suddenly sprang back to life. Peterson promptly loaded another round into the breach, and the ensuing shot caused the Russian vehicle to erupt in flames, with its crew desperately attempting to flee the inferno. On this day, Whitman and his crew displayed tremendous courage in facing a pack of superior T-34s alone and annihilating six of these vehicles. Even when employing AP ammunition, the low muzzle velocity of the main gun often couldn't deliver enough energy to penetrate the thick armor of the newer Russian tanks. Nonetheless, Stubes managed to destroy the latest Soviet heavy tanks, despite this technological limitation. Other compensatory factors came into play, chiefly the exceptional technical competence of Stube crews. Rigorous training had honed their skills, allowing them to combine the Stube's mobility with precise and rapid gunnery. They excelled at delivering the initial shot and fully leveraging the machine's inherent advantages, including its low profile and relatively heavy frontal armor. On the evening of July 12, 1941, both Whitman and his driver Fritz were proudly awarded the Iron Cross Second Class by a jubilant SS Obergruppenführer Sepp Dietrich. For Whitman, this marked the beginning of a series of battlefield decorations that would follow. This newly decorated Stud III commander received a warm reception from his devoted crew, solidifying the fact that a true warrior had emerged. 